In this tutorial, I want to give you an overview of Cytoscape and the common workflow for getting information into your application. I'll be using 3.8.1 on a Mac. The first thing is to bring your node and edge tables for your network into Cytoscape. You can do this with a number of different formats, but one common way of doing it is to export a comma-separated values, or CSV format, from Microsoft Excel, Apple Numbers, or Libre, or OpenOffice. The edges will contain your relationships and any attributes of those relationships. Best practice is not to use as what I'm doing here, which is the first name of the individuals as my key source and target nodes. Normally you would use a series of numbers, ID numbers unique to that individual. If Chongsu is the first person in my node table, they might be ID number one. If Minjia was the second, they would be ID number two. So this would be a one and a two. This would also be a two. A nodes table contains, again, usually a series of unique ID numbers. That's to account for situations where you may have multiple individuals with the same name and any other attributes um, that you want to track about them. Inside of Scape, first bring in the edge table by clicking on the import network button and selecting your edges table. You have to tell Cytoscape which column is that which indicates the source node, which column is that which indicates the target node, and these are correctly identified as edge attributes. If you have a tab delimited file, then you can indicate that here. Your network should now be visualized in the workspace over here. The node table still has not a lot of information, so let's import in the node table. This time, instead of import network, we choose import table from file, choose the node table, make sure that it says import the data as node table columns, and that it has the correct key Again, this would normally be a series of ID numbers that correspond to the ID numbers in the edge table, but in this case I'm using the first name of the individuals. The information is now added to your node table. You can select individuals here using the shift and or the command key. If you hold down the command key, at least on a Mac, you can also drag over a group of individuals. In this case, it's selected the edges as well as the nodes. Note that when you select individuals, agents in your network graph, those and only those will show up in the table below. You can also move things around in such a way that you like, and you can change the layout of your table by trying out any number of these different layouts up here. Great, now we've imported our information, how do we style it in a useful way? Let's say, for example, I wanted to change the shape of these nodes to correspond to the sex of the individual. If I change the shape directly over here, it will change the shape on every individual, and that's not what we want to do. In order to map it to a variable, you have to flip things down here in your styling. This is true for all of them. Choose the column that you want the shape to reflect. In this case, I'm choosing the gender column. And often there'll be a continuous mapping here if, you, if it's a range of numbers, like the number of mentions. But in this case, we're going to want discrete mapping because we're going to have a different shape for the two different sexes indicated here. Double clicking on that, let's say we make women rectangles and men circles. And you'll now see that those are indicated here. You can use this search box up here to search for things um, in your node tables. Uh, for example, if I search for Korea, it will select all the individuals that have that in the nationality column. Or I can search for specific individuals 
uh, by searching for their name and they'll be found in this case both in the node table and in the edge table because this edge indicates a relationship between these two individuals. Whether or not it selects only nodes, edges, or both will depend on what is selected down here. What if we want to show nationality by color? So the fill color, let's map that to nationality. Discrete mapping, and let's say, for example, we make uh, China a greenish color, Japan a bluish color or a purplish color, and um, how about a, a light salmon-y color for Korea. So things become a little more, uh, they pop out a little bit more when you style them. We have the node styling active right now, um, but we can also style the edges. There are all sorts of other things that you can style with your um, uh, nodes in addition to these two. Um, size, for example, is currently locked, but if you click lock node width and height, I could, for example, style the size according to how many times they were mentioned in my sources through the mentions column. And this time I'm gonna choose continuous mapping which gives me a range of um, sizes here. If I had done this through colors, then the colors would show up as a gradient here. If you double click on the size gradient or the color gradient, you can indicate a minimum size and a maximum size for the range available. So here you can see these individuals have a much higher number of mentions than these individuals. Now let's style the edges a bit. What if I wanted to style the thickness of the edge according to how intense the relationship is as judged here? Let's flip down width, make it according to intensity, and make it continuous mapping. That's a bit thick. So let's have, um, let's set a minimum of, let's say two up to something that's not quite as wide. Okay, I like that. So now we have thicker or thinner lines in between them. You could color them according to the kind of relationship. So I'm gonna change the stroke color. If I did it there, it would change all of them. I'm gonna flip this down, make this according to kind. There's only three kinds, so we're gonna use discrete mapping. For this type of relationship, let's say red, for this kind of relationship, let's say blue, and for this kind, let's say uh, green. As you can tell, if you start adding too many different stylings for different variables, your chart is gonna start looking more and more busy. So um, let's turn this off. You can turn off an individual styling by right-clicking and do reset default value, and you can get rid of the mapping by right-clicking and choosing Edit, Remove Mappings from um, the Selected Value. Uh, I'm going to remove it from Width as well. Great. Another common thing that you'll do at this point uh, would be to indicate um, certain statistical features of your network. If you go up to Tools and choose Analyze Network, you have to tell it whether or not your graph is directed Clicking OK, in this case I'm assuming that I'm not using a directed graph, will add things such as closeness centrality, degree, betweenness centrality, clustering coefficient, average shortest distance, etc., which you can now also use to style your, your graph. Just a few other miscellaneous things that you can do here. If you select a subset of nodes, you can create a new network from the uh, selected elements. 
they will now be listed over here as a kind of a sub-network that you can flip in between. You can also, let's destroy that one again, let's destroy this sub-network. You can also hide a particular number of uh, elements. If you select them and right click off of them, you can say hide the selected nodes. If you ever want to get them back, just go to select and show all nodes and edges. You can group a group of nodes. I want to deselect this one here and group them and give them a name. When you double click on a group, it will disappear into a single node like this and double clicking on it again will unpack it as it were. If you have a very complex network that can be useful in um, making your your um, graph a little less busy as it were. Other useful features that are good to know is that um, there is also a whole range of styles that you can choose from. In addition to the ones that you create yourself, there are a number of standard styles um, that have saved in them a whole range of different uh, styling features. In this case, it has changed it to a uh, curved directional network. Um, if you have a directional network and you want to display arrows going in one direction or another, um, those can be styled by yourself uh, or they can uh, be um, done right here in the arrow shape. And also when you add the statistical information, you can tell it to treat the network as a directed one. When you've styled your graph and you're ready to export it, go up to File, Export, and you can export it as an image, for example. Choose the format that you want to have. I suggest picking a, a very high zoom, giving you a large image, um, as that will uh, result in a file that's a lot less blurry than it might otherwise be. So we can see when it exports it, it exports it at exactly the view that you have in here. So if you're incredibly zoomed in and you export an image, you will end up with an image that is similarly zoomed in. Cytoscape also has the ability to be shown in a web-based uh, interactive mode that will allow you to move nodes and edges around, uh, but that's a topic for another tutorial.